This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Make sure you go check out the affiliate link down below. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we're going to be talking about the two color combinations in CEDH and ranking them. We're going to rank them on which color, like which color command, which ones have the best commander. So for Simic, best commander in Simic. Boros, best commander in Boros. We're going to go through like that. Exactly. So we're, we're not going to rank every single two color commander. We'd be here for days, but just for each color con- combination, man, I can't talk today. For each color combination, that's hard to say though. We're going to find out what deck or commander is best in that color combination. That's exactly what we're going to do today. Why are all of our titles, they feel like a Fall Out Boy song? Like they're so long. They're a full sentence. I don't know why we can't just like narrow it down they're well, always very well it's because i we're not talking about these very broad subjects it's right very specific you know a lot of love songs are just about to like any generic person that's listening to it no that's not what this is not us this is a love song for very specific color combinations but not all the decks just some of the decks <laughs> the best decks in each color combination exactly all right let's get started all right so we're gonna start off with the first color combination and that's azorius yes this is blue and white great yeah i love it white cards are white and blue cards are blue what are some of the options for this one for me right away i think shorakai shorakai is the first thing that i think of too i think this is an actually a really good deck um that can utilize a lot of powerful one card win conditions like polymorph but you can also play builds that allow you to play some of the best creatures that white has to offer too like the ranger captain of eos and a lot of the other cards that we typically mention on this channel yeah when i first started playing that deck i played it for a little while i was playing the polymorph version so you play only uh the kraken in there or maybe tight spot tyrant 2 and no other creatures so that when you cast a polymorph on one of your pilots that your shorakai makes you can turn it into a hole breaker horror what did i say a kraken a hole breaker horror is it is a kraken it is a kraken yeah, I was right about it's that. a big red lobster um, the i eventually changed off of that m- that version of the deck and i put some creatures in the deck uh for two reasons one it felt like the actual polymorph win wasn't that easy i'm not playing Kinnon. i'm not playing urza i don't have a way to guarantee that i can do the combo even after the hole breaker horror is in play so sometimes it felt like I had this like four man away to get Holebreaker Horror right in play and then what nothing you know what I mean so it felt it was better to me like there are so many white creatures that are getting printed to cut yourself off from that felt really bad when your main reason for doing it didn't even really feel that great um, so I'm playing the version or well, when I do play the deck I'm playing the version with Esper Sentinel with Ranger Captain of Eos with Dranith Magistrate there's a lot of good creature cards and still playing the Holebreaker Horror but kind of using like Isochron Scepter Dramatic Versal as the other way to win yeah you leaning can, more into that yeah, yeah. you're slow deck you want to make it to the late game you'll have it by the time you can cast those cards um they can be decent uh in other points of the game since you are playing ooh, what's the card artifact that says at the beginning of each upkeep untap all artifacts you control unwinding clock I, unwinding clock of course you're the magda player no no no. that's not what Unwinding clock does is it no magda doesn't play that one. Oh, what does magda play uh, what's the clock, it's the clock, clock of, of omens, omens. That... sorry 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 okay so yeah, yeah. it's okay. unwinding clock is the card that i'm talking about untaps all your artifacts at the beginning of each upkeep with shorakai is an artifact so you can get extra draws which is great not only that isochron scepter can also be used with this if you get a silence under there you can silence everyone at the beginning of their upkeep if you get a counter spell under there you can keep on untapping your isochron scepter that has a spell in it and and use it as a control thing because that's what this deck is i think it's a control deck and i was playing terminus in it which is like to me the biggest pull like you can play terminus in this yeah. deck i think and it can be really good because you're also playing since he's divining top and counterbalance because shorkai gets to change the top of your deck too and like you're playing some creatures but you're not playing like too many creatures no. where you're conveniently finding yourself you know having board wipes that are still super card advantage for you right you're only playing like eight or ten creatures you're still in that kess range where right. you can play your toxic Toxic Deluge, except your Toxic Deluge can be Vanquish the Horde and Terminus, which is what I was playing, and I think yeah. those cards are great. So outside of Shorakai, I don't really see a lot of good Azorius options. Grand Arbiter? Grand Arbiter used to see play. Yeah, and that, that can be a stack stack. Like, Not Lavinia is Lavinia. a one-card combo because your Commando is is part of the cards in the combo. But it's only a lockout. It's not a win, right. which is good. It's, it's basically a win. But I, don't your opponents still have their hands after that? I believe leave with knowledge pool they will have your their hands no so you just don't draw other cards but you can still cast the stuff from your hand and if anyone has a removal spell you know i would want to scry full check on that because i know there's knowledge pool and then there's another one one of them locks them out of one way one of them locks them out of the other way and to be honest i can't remember which one's which 
to be honest while cameron looks this up either way i don't think it makes them that good enough lavinia is a very powerful card i don't understand what the fuck it does most of the time and neither does anyone else which is i think one of the reasons why it's pretty good oh so i think knowledge pool would lock them out well knowledge pool locks them out of their hand because it's whenever a player cast a spell from his or her hand that player exiles it if that player does you can cast a spell that was exiled with knowledge pool which of course um when knowledge pool enters the battlefield each player exiles the top three cards of their library so that that's how you fill up the pool and then and then lavinia yeah. says that you can't do that knowledge pool says you can cast another thing or whatever lavinia says you can't do it because they you, get countered right, because you get countered. you're not spending any mana on that exactly there is a four mana version of this that is what you're thinking i can't think of the name right now is it uba mask it is uba mask that uba mask i think allows them to still play the cards out of their hand it just says whenever they would draw a card instead they can exile it and then they can play it from exile uh yeah that whenever if a player would draw a card that player removes a card from the game face up and each player can play those cards that are exiled so you right. basically just don't refuel, refuel your hand this works with like draineth magistrate yeah too. i guess this one doesn't work with lavinia because lavinia only cares about the mana that you have it, that you're not casting it for free this that's way that's true so this is not uba mass so this is, this is the card way, that i was thinking it yeah. combos with draineth magistrate not lavinia all of that to say I don't it's think not it's a that good, good a right? But I'm glad that we came, we put a nail in that coffin so that we're not leaving people hanging. Excellent. Uh, there's one more card, and man, I'm bad with names today, but uh, it's the one that combos with Lion's Eye Diamond. It was pretty newly printed. Um, it should be on the database if you want to check real quick. The, I only, it was. the only one is Short It's the only one Short On maybe the it's main been database. Maybe it's been moved to... Move to the Brewer's, Brewer's Corner. There is I can Azorius see the art Vol. in my head. I can see it, but I can't... I thought it came out of like one of the Kamigawa sets or something. I don't know. We're moving past Azorius. Sure, Kai's the best. Should we move sure to the next Kai's combination? The best. <laughs> yeah. So what? We we we're ranking them. So right now, Azorius is the best. <laughs> Great. So we're gonna I move agree. on. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. So we're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk about Demir next. Okay. So for me, Demir, first thing I think of is uh, Yuriko still. Yuriko, yeah, exactly. I um, think is Yuriko still the best? I feel like it's got some tournament results. I've I seen think Yuriko, Yuriko win. is probably still the best because otherwise you're playing like Toxril or like some other kind of like just a regular oh, Demir Scepter. You deck. know what? Recently we had a top ten ranking where we put Vohar above Toxril. I'm pretty sure we did that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I disagreed with that when I watched it back right away. I said, that's not right. Toxtro is definitely better. All right. Well, that's fine. Hindsight is 2020, and but we I, can— I, I do think Yuriko is better than Toxtro. Like, Yuriko you can use right away. Lots of card advantage. Yeah. You get to play a lot of fun spells, which I think is a pro. Um, one thing that these like two-color decks often have that the four-color decks don't is you get to play a couple of extra like unique cards because the commander themselves have to be pretty powerful and synergistic in order for them to be stronger than partners, or at least be able to compete with partners True. that's just the reality of cdh is if you're going to compete in that world your commander has to be very powerful so the two mana ones are very efficient a lot of time they have a strategy they have a game plan they they have a purpose the partner decks are like let me draw cards and win when it's appropriate to win that's the game plan that's the purpose whereas like the two color decks like yuriko says let me play some fucking ninjas let me get in here for some combat damage let me get, have some evasive attackers you can play these cards that otherwise would be kind of trash but in yuriko they're awesome yeah, no, I absolutely love decks that are able to take these weird, obscure cards and actually make them really work in CEDH. Uh, this color combination gives you access to Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Con Consultation. Number one takeaway. If exactly. you're in Demir, you can play any legendary creature and your deck's great. Truly, I don't, I think that's a real sentence. Like, I that, think, I, back, I, yeah, that's right? real. <laughs> I, I think if you're playing like fast mana and a lot of interaction, I think you can make that deck work a lot of the time. So um, I think that this means that this was, a better color combination than Azorius hands down I think so too and I would put Yuriko as a top one but there's a conversation for Toxtril I think I think there's a conversation but I, the other ones that are like Scepter outlets and can also do stuff oh I think they're all worse than Yuriko I think they're worse than Yuriko and, and Toxtril Yuriko is very specific though so if you want to just do generic blue black stuff Toxtril might be more your speed if you're trying to control the board I think Toxtril is much better than that but who if do you, you're who do you go to if you just want to go Turbo Demir ad nauseum like what is what's your option what's, what is there anything else in the database you know you can play Malcolm Tevish dude dude 
I've been thinking about that. You've been thinking about Malcolm Tevis? Well, I shouldn't Side say that. Side podcast. <laughs> all right, so it offers card advantage in the okay. command zone, and yeah. it offers card draw in the command zone. Yeah. That's really good. That's all you need to know. That's what you just said. Card advantage and card draw in the command zone. Fuck, what I meant was mana, mana. advantage Yeah, I knew what you meant, draw. but I had Thank to be you. an sorry. asshole no, about it. No, totally. I'm sorry I misspoke. Um, you get uh, mana advantage, mana, and card advantage. Card. I don't know why I'm like, mana <laughs> advantage. That's mana. mana. Card. <laughs> card advantage. Those are cards. Why well, say? Like the worst teacher ever. <laughs> Why well, say many word when few word do trick, right? I don't even think those word do trick. Yeah. That deck is cool, though. I think, just think you got a lot of power in the command zone. Yeah, no, I, I totally think so, too. What else is there for Jameer on the database? That's, I mean, that's kind of what we're the, going by. Yeah, we're just going by the database. Those are the four decks that are on there. Like, we've talked about that. What was it? It was Yurko. It was Toxreal. It was... Malcolm Tevish and Vohar. And Vohar. Okay. I guess Vohar is a, is a fast option. If you want to go turbo Demir, Vohar is still your option. Vohar would probably be your option. And I guess in that way, Turbo Demir is probably better than Control Demir. So maybe I'm back on Vohar's better than Toxrill. Hell I yeah! I all don't right, know, well, opinions are hard. We all we all know that sometimes we don't just spit shit, and <laughs> sometimes what we say makes sense. All right, so right now I'm putting Demir at number one. Yeah, definitely. And I'm putting Azorius at number two, and that we're gonna move right. on to Rakdos. Love it. This is probably my favorite combination. I just, knew you like, were gonna say not that. like specifically for CDH because I don't know how great it is just by itself as in CDH, but just in Magic Rakdos is my. It's is a my cool favorite. color combination. Yeah, so in Rakdos, you get there's. Uh, not a lot that's on here. Rag Tevish mm. is definitely one that comes to my mind. Because, that's one that I played. Yeah, Turbo Naws is just always great, and these are the colors that make Turbo Naws good. Yep. Like, blue is there in Turbo Naws for interaction, but all the Turbo Naws stuff that's actually happening isn't because of blue. It's because of the black and the red that you have. Exactly. This deck is super fast. It's super consistent. What it lacks is any real meaningful way to protect itself. It has... Um, yeah. Uh, what's well, our, that's just what's, a Rakdos, what's your favorite card? Uh, Green. Grim Hireling? No, isn't it the artifact that makes things cost two more? On oh, your defense grid. Defense grid. We have, grid. We, defense we, grid. We now officially hate a lot of cards. Yeah. So it, it, do we hate? No, it's just defense. You hate defense grid, and we both hate Wheel of Misfortune. I like defense grid. Nah, defense grid's pretty good. Yeah. We we learned that defense grid is really good when you can discard it, and then Armix gets <laughs> yeah. pumped extra yeah. more because yeah, exactly. You got to discard the defense grid. Great. Back on track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where were we? <laughs> so Rakdos decks. Right. Outside of Rog, Tevish, like I'm looking at Prosper, but like sure. I don't know if Prosper has like the tournament pedigree. And if we're looking at tournament pedigree, Florian top 16th yeah. in event, and that's not listed here on the database. Honestly, so, yeah. I've seen more tournament results from Florian than any other Rakdos commander. It just you know has what? like a nutty Rog amount of card Tevish, advantage. There was that Rog Tevish polymorph. Mm, so like Rog sure. Tevish can also do like weird stuff stacks things where you can like polymorph rock rack into uh, not actually polymorph but like transmorgify sure yeah into like a void winner or some other big right. stupid stacks piece oh yeah i know sometimes didn't rebel have a deck that used the double one to get uh turgrid and uh sire of insanity that's nuts yeah. oh my god go to your end step and then everyone discards their hands and turgrid gets them all that's, yeah that's so really good. there's <laughs> a lot of flexibility there i have i have rakdos over azorius in cedh I think um so hmm that's because, hard because because really we're just looking at like one Azorius deck versus like a couple of actually decent options for Rakdos yeah you know what in that way I think you're right yeah I, I guess I agree Rakdos is better than Azorius it's got it doesn't have the interaction which really bothers me in a tournament just because I don't want to take a deck yeah. to a tournament that I don't think can defend itself well but if you know how to play the deck super well and you can pick your timings very well I think then that could be totally fine you just have to play in a very specific way play like a Rakdos player don't play like a Demir player if that you know what i mean like yeah right you can't you can't expect to control the whole board you have to pick and choose your points of interaction very carefully based on the specific tools that you have there's going to be times where your opponent's got two blue and it's turn two and you say they might have a counter spell fuck it i'm just going to try anyway because if i wait i won't ever get there sometimes they'll get you sometimes they yeah. won't you have to be able to feel those times out i think but you build your deck so that you can win again on your following turn that's the important reason why you that color combination can power out yep even more than like Azorius, I yeah, think. Instead of protecting, you're just saying, okay, if you stop me now, I'm just going to win with Underworld Reach next yeah. turn. If you stop that, I'll win with Yagmas Will to turn after that. And the problem with the next color combination that we talk about is that it doesn't do either of those things because Gruul doesn't really have tools to um, interact like 
at all in like yeah. most meaningful ways. It is unfortunate that Green has not got a lot of tools super recently, I think, that at least give it a strong reason to play it. And although Red has some very powerful tools, it only has really a, a few of them. Dockside and Underworld Breach is kind of a short list. I mean, the Red Blasts are great. Um, you know, Magus of the Moon can be okay sometimes. But there's like, what Lightning Bolt, what else really is there in Red that you're there's, playing? Uh, Gamble. Not really much, right? So there are two decks that for me now come to mind okay one of them because it's on the database is actually the minx and boo timeless hero yeah which is a deck that i immediately don't know much about it's a hulk deck i think i think it is a hulk deck yeah it's he's playing legacy that card i think that's funny <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't weird? know much about legacy either the other one that i think about is the new atali oh. apparently oh. people keep telling me that this thing is pretty good i've heard this from multiple people that it's really good hold on well, we got to show off some bling. I just got a foil one. Oh, hey, yo. Focus on it. Yeah, this card's pretty cool. Yeah, so this card basically just does uh, a lot of nutty things just by uh, casting cards from your opponents. It's seven deck. mana, that's a ton, but we're in a Jewel Lotus world. You get a lot of card advantage just on the ETB, which is nice. And if you want to flip it and you can one shot someone with Infect, that's also kind of cool. 100%. It's a yeah. food chain deck, also, which it, is great. I love that. Love a food chain love deck. Love a good food chain deck. What yeah. happened to Rurikthar? Uh, Rogue Thar's just not good. Not you're not in good stacks colors. Like green is green is only a good stacks piece for like one or two cards. You get collect roof, which is a very high. That's very, very high. Good. Yeah, and then your list stops pretty close. You get Magus of the Moon, and then your list stops pretty close. Those are really honestly, those two together are great. All your opponents have is mountains and artifacts that don't do anything. It's getting close time to wrap it on up for them, but. You're not very deep in your colors. You got to start branching out to weirdo options pretty soon. Um, I think that's the main issue that holds yeah. school back. I probably put it at the lowest one. That's what we're talking oh, about. Oh, so I far. have it as number four right now too. We can just pump right along to. I think Minx is probably the best one for this category, though. Moving on. Okay. Yeah, I will give you that. Minx right now. Hard to say too. Draws yeah. cards and yeah. Selesnia. This is a color combination that includes white and green. And <laughs> Yasharn. <laughs> yes, I would honestly say Yasharn is the is the deck to to beat in this category. Great stacks piece. Best jewel lotus deck I think there is. You get the land basic lands right away. That's not true best, but it's really good jewel lotus deck. You can jewel mulligan lotus very deck. aggressively just Juicy for the best Najila exists. Okay. And this right. is the right. best. That was a little hyperbolic deck. of the moment. <laughs> it's a very, very good jewel lotus deck. It really is. Because you can mulligan solo to find it because you get the basic lands right away because it itself is a stack piece that almost surely directly impacts basically every deck in the format 100% um, you can mulligan very aggressively I think uh, I, I like this deck a lot yeah the only other deck that I would say you could also put up an argument for would be Sithis uh, sure. which is card advantage in the command zone in Selesnia but it's only off of specific permanence and I feel like you then start to dilute your deck with some permanence that aren't as good and you end up lowering the power of your deck that way Yashorn is just able to play all of the better cards in those colors instead I agree. of sacrificing anything yeah Sithis I do think Sithis can pack some heat Sithis can definitely do some powerful oh, things definitely. but being so permanent oriented um, is just not kind of where I would want to be like specific like permanence that, that can't attack you yeah. know what I mean you're in green white that's that's your that's what you're good at is attacking exactly lean into it now that being said I think that it's a better color combination than Gruel but I think it will stop there I think yeah. I would rather be in Azorius than Celestia. I think white is better than red at least in these two color decks where you're not doing ad nauseum things. White has some gifts to ad nauseum, but not a ton, but it's got a ton of gifts to creature decks like this. Exactly, yeah. I think this color combination supports that a little bit better. The so. other, only other one that I would talk about for green-white is the green-white Silvala, which is a deck that I don't trust. Any deck that's oh. drawing other people's cards is not a deck that I like, but it no. does, it's a, it's been a CDH deck in the past. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's been a great CDH deck in the past. Either. Yasharn it is. Yeah. All right, so our next color combination is Orzov. Ooh. So this um, one, this one um, is a little bit weird because um, does uh, one exist? Is there one on the database? The one on the database is Tim the Tevish. Sure. Which is just like, all right, great. He's two advantage. partners. That's just. Tim is, is it stacks or ad nauseum? It's uh, prison. Is prison. the name on here? Sure. And it says rule of law also here. So great. Yeah. Um. That sounds fun. Yeah. I, don't, I think this one's pretty low. I to think be honest, this one's pretty low, too. I never see Orzov decks. I've seen a couple Luris decks, actually, so I take that back kind yep. of. But and just, I've lost to a Luris deck. Yeah, they, they, they can be strong. I guess the main issue is 
the again the lack of interaction and lack of real heat in the command zone you know what i mean That's some of the other is. commander options are really really great and although timna is good timna is better with krom better yeah. with rastio so it's just better things to be doing with timna almost same can be true for tevish there's a couple of other like uh humans that were printed in the uh the warhammer set okay that also have been like on the brewer's corner of the database before that like are still basically the same thing but they have like different draw clauses on them and like maybe they also deal damage so um they're again still not better than tim the tevish i would think but at the same time what also makes tim so good is that you can pair it up with all of these other different partners that have so many better options in different colors for you that playing this feels like um i don't know i'd rather much play like thrasios too yeah it just it doesn't really feel like it has much of an identity you know what i mean like yeah. we were talking about malcolm tevish just a while ago but like that one had both card draw and mana it had like a an appeal to be there it offered two things tim tim uh tevish is that's kind of like the same thing that's You're both, both card advantage Card advantage. You know what I mean? And I know what you're saying. Well, you know, so so is like Armix Crown too, or, or right? Timnicrom, but or, the, those decks have more yes, colors. That's what I mean. It's, yes, it's okay when you have more colors because you access to have access to better cards. It's less okay the lower the color combination. I would are, definitely I agree with that too. So where do you have this like versus Gruel? Do you think this is a better co color combination of being in Gruel? Realistically, it's the same. I don't rank one better or worse than the other. Well, I think we the, have to we, because I, so I understand that we oh, have okay. to for the numbers. You know what I mean? So if we have to do that i think orzov is uh, dude white and black are better than red and green that's what i think too i would i would confidently say that i would rather be in orzov than in just straight gruel because at least i have timna in the command zone and i think timna is going to be better than anything else that gruel has and i feel like i'd even rather just play timna than any gruel Almost certainly. Timna Commander, is so good, even right? by itself. Yeah, so I would put Orzov at our number five and Gruul at our number six. Yep, I and think I that's wouldn't, right. And I wouldn't bat an eye at that at all. Rock on, brother. Cool. Now, the next one is Is It. Is It? Yeah. Is now, It's good. Is It's good. There's. I have a bunch of decks that I think of when I think we of We have is some it. options. Nib Is It. Kark and Sakashima that's is the other one, one I think too. of. All right, which one do you want to start with? Niv is it. All right, Niv is it. Really powerful, impossible to cast. But once you do get it out there, that thing is sticky. Not this is the best jeweled lotus deck. That is very that that might be closer to true, especially when you copy artifact your jeweled lotus. That's great, right? Yeah, I don't think this is actually the best jeweled lotus deck, but I think this is the deck that benefited the most from jeweled lotus. Certainly, because I remember playing the deck pre jeweled lotus and like having to play captain lannery storm let me tell you new to cedh players you don't know how good you have it <laughs> since since jeweled lotus says came the out. old man oh the my god it's such a such a much better scenario for this deck truly um the deck is tons of card advantage combo in the command zone i really like it but it's being difficult to cast so it doesn't see a lot of play um brings it down as a deck overall that being said i feel like it's one of these cards when when it resolves because it can't be countered game's over the game's over game's over there's you just try to deal with it and then that gives them the interaction that they needed and then like your thing gets swords to plowshares instead right yeah uh there's kark and sakashima oh my god that remember when ken won yes. a tournament with that deck? i absolutely do remember that uh kark and sakashima is much faster than niv mizzet it's its strategy is much more linear although niv mizzet does have a linear strategy its linearness is just curiosity effect on the niv mizzet that's the that's strategy whereas kark and sakashima you can really get creative with some of your choices i think oh, there's yeah. a lot of weirdo cards that you definitely should play and and there's a lot of flex slots that you can also play too. Definitely. That deck just, I feel like, is always getting new tools accidentally. Yep. Like they consistently pass me by. And then, like, months after they're printed, like, I'll be playing against a Kark and Sakashima player. And then I'll see this card and be like, oh my God, that's genius. Yeah, I know. That's the, so the, good. The recent one that I saw is the Ticket Maker, the one that makes tickets and gets from the unset. Uh, it's Is it Blank Goblin? No, no, no. It's the blue card that it gives you four options. And you can either, like, get two tickets, get Get a contraption. That's not what they're called. What are they called? Are they stickers? Are you getting the you can stickers? Get stickers? Yeah, there's a bunch of different and options. And you go on an attraction? Yeah, you can do two of those four things. Uh, and it just so happens that when you have a Kark and Sakashima and you keep on re recasting the things, the values that you okay. get ends up being worth so it. So this is how you get around learning what this does 
play creature interaction and then never let them have a copy of Krark. Yeah, gonna, don't let Viren hit the play. You're like, gonna just, say what is it does, and they're gonna go, okay, let me tell you. Here's my book. I'm describing what it does. And you go, yep. ah, shut no, up, lightning never mind. bolt. Never mind. Force of will. Actually, like, this is a sorcery though. You have to counter it. Yeah, it's like an instant or something. It's not a creature. No, you have to deal with it. You deal with this card way before it's cast. Yeah. Okay. By dealing with the Sakashima or the Krark. The Krark. Sakashima, yeah. yeah. You don't. You don't even let this come up. Destroy the Krark with the Sakashima on the stack. That's yeah. the strategy. We know that's the strategy. Remember, that's the strategy. Yeah. And this deck is not as much of a problem. So we have a lot of other things that are just like on the database that like you and I have even thought about like different Jessica and Malcolm decks and oh, like sure. Crom partner decks that like these three partners in particular have like so many different control options around them. If you're playing with Malcolm, you have access to the Glinthorn Buccaneer one card combo in there too. Very and if you're playing Crom, you get access to card draw. If you're playing Jessica, you have access to creature removal and an infinite mana outlet in the command zone too. So this shell i think is also a super good place to be 100 percent. this is also the color combination where you need to be in order to be playing brain freeze underworld breach and led to basically just say i win the game if i have these three cards yep, that's true and they also can be pretty okay on their own especially underworld breach can help you get to those cards pretty quickly uh the issue that i have with is that the only real issue is finding your win condition can be tricky oh the tutors, the tutors are, are bad ball not not a ton you get mystical tutor which gets an instant sorcery you get a couple of other blue ones that can find an artifact so if you're an isogron scepter if you're in jessica that can be okay as far as red you get gamble that's it that's red, it red's really best when it's paired with black because black has the tutors and red has all the other stuff exactly you get so, like imperial recruiter imperial recruiter can be okay but with uh, i mean imperial recruiter can find glenhorn buccaneer that's a that's a really important to that's note really out. good yeah um, when i was playing that malcolm crom deck i love that deck because i feel like it was perfectly balanced it had mana advantage i remember they said it right card advantage and also a win condition being the the uh glenhorn buccaneer in the yeah. command zone that's great to have all that but without the tutors it was just lacking there were certain times where like okay i'm ready to win the game now like i've done the things i've gotten the tempo it's my turn i should be able to do it here and i just wasn't able to yeah it's definitely a problem there so where do we have this ranked then with everything because i think it's definitely better than gruel yep. definitely better than orzov yep. definitely better than Selesnia. Yep. Azorius is next, and I think it's better than Azorius. Better than Azorius. Now, where do we have it versus Rakdos? Close. I think it's pretty close, too. Probably better, unfortunately. So, as much as I love Rakdos, blue is just better than black, I think. I still think it's blue, then black, then red, then white, then green in power level, and for that reason... Also, niv and Kark and, Sak Kark and Sakashima are better than the Rakdos options, like... Just when you compare them, Prosper is not as good as those two. Yeah, I would definitely say that. And we, we've we talked about a lot of decks, too. Right? Like, we, we just spent a lot more time on is it than we did with like a lot of these other color combinations yep. it's so a deep it's a deeper color combination yeah exactly there's definitely a lot of options that you have um we're on we we have three more to talk about here we're wait kinda, so all right so then it's it's is it and then demir it's is it and then demir for our top slots yes so golgari is our next one get rug monster <laughs> that's a legend. always the one that i think of too yeah not as good anymore right I wouldn't say that it's as well. I think it's still really good. Got you a Lotus, which is Again, great for that deck. A lot of these two color decks just get to yeah. utilize Jeweled Lotus so well. Gidrog um, suffers from it being really hard to play. It's like a, one of the main reasons why Anala doesn't see more play, I think, too, is like Gidrog is in the same camp of like, if everyone could play this deck perfectly, it would probably win a decent amount of tournaments. I don't know about tournaments because it does bend the rules. And depending on your judge, I don't know how you get through certain interactions with Gidrog. Um, but it's common. Combo is super, it's very much like some of the other ones we were talking about where it's like very synergistic, very powerful. Everything works together really well. The only thing it lacks is, I guess, blue. We've said that for any of the non-blue decks is like not having counterspell sucks and Git Rock doesn't uh, compensate for that. It really right. doesn't. Yeah, it's it can be very difficult in that deck, at least from when I've played it, to be able to present like follow-up win conditions because there's so many pieces that you need. Like you needed the discard outlet, you need the Dockmore Selvage specifically. Like if they somehow have a way to deal with your graveyard while that's in there, yeah. like you're fucked. There's not much else you can do. That's true. Some of the decks are playing Witherboom, Apprentice, and Chain of Smog, which I actually think is like a great include. One, because the Chain of Smog can kind of work with your Gitrog mod. Monster, like that's forcing true. you to discard a card, discard a land draw. That's nice. But 
Um, just like you said, if someone gets rid of your Dakmar Salvage, you can still win with the Chain of Smog. With a Murprentis combo, I like having two different options, I think. There's a lot of Praetor's Grasps. and it, I feel like normally I would have said one win condition is all you need for like a long time. Now I'm in the camp of like, I would like two, please. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Two separate avenues is, yeah, is what I, I'm Yeah, I can't for. play a deck that only has the one win condition. Like, I, for me, I got to have a backup somewhere. And I think that's like the perfect backup win condition where like if I'm playing a deck that is a non blue green black deck i feel like at least 50 percent of the time i'm also playing that combo in there the with a bloom apprentice yeah combo like it's just it's efficient and it's so easy just to set up right yeah. it, you, you can try to time it so that you empty your hand when you're ready to yeah. do it so you don't lose that much value if you get stopped if you're playing ad nauseum and like your end step ad nauseum like it can be so easy to piece together instead of having to go like okay well i didn't get everything but i got my chain of smog and like two tutors like or just two tutors even like you can still i've never lost a game where i that i cast calling ritual in that card is powerful that card has a 100 <laughs> percent win condition for me specifically win rate yeah a win rate yeah, yeah I, I would say golgari also has like the singularly most powerful cards being that card abrupt decay and assassin's trophy yeah i think are, I, abrupt decay specifically is just like an s tier removal if you can play it you should play it 100 percent. the card is a little bit underrated and really really powerful i also have a hard time not playing assassin's trophy too dude true i know a lot of people cut it because they don't want two two mana removal spells i get that assassin's trophy hitting everything it's just it's it, it so hits good. everything whatever everything. is a problem Doesn't and matter. everyone thinks that their lands are going to get away with it until you have assassin's trophy <laughs> and then nobody plays these basics where are basics gone nobody has basics yeah i totally recommend playing assassin's trophy for that reason i've loved having removal spells that can especially in a, a format that can't counter things yeah not a format but a, a color combination that sure. can't right so it's it can be a lot tougher to be able to actually deal with things but having two cards that can basically deal with everything i don't like leaving home without them I agree. I'm right there with you. Yeah. These are also really good Hulk colors. So, like, you have access to Dina, which is a Hulk deck. And I think Grist is actually the better of the Hulk decks. Don't forget about Varal. It's the OG. Oh, For the free. OG. For free. You can sacrifice it as many times as you want. Boom. Yeah, that, that is pretty good, too. And these cards have Veil of Summer and Autumn's Veil to help protect their combo. But outside of that, not much in the stack protection. No, you really don't. Your creature removal is good because you're in black. And you have good artifact and enchantment removal because of green. So, like, you, you still get to card play, draw, like too. Yeah, that's true. You have decent card draw. Um, and you have access to Adnaws. But, like, green is not really a good Adnaws. It's a Adnaws support color. Yeah. It really requires like another color to be with it for green to be good in the Adnaz decks, I think. There's a little bit of a pull between your mana dorks have to wait a turn for you to use and Ad Nauseam wants you to be able to use your mana right away. So that kind of pull can be a little bit when you're Ad Nauseam and revealing mana dorks and you go, oh, these don't really do anything right now. That sucks. But you are playing things like Calling the Week and Calling Ritual that can help use those mana dorks and turn them into mana right away. Yeah, luckily Black does have options for that too. And it does stink because some of these decks are also playing like Collector Oof in them. And when you're also also like trying to rely on like some of these the, the good artifacts that are trying to also pump out your five mana commander or something there's, there's a little pull there's little a little bit of a pull, pull in these colors where you're trying to do kind of two separate things yeah. sometimes i don't think it runs oof though i feel like it, oof does. Is just a, it does i think it does i feel like you should just run should we double check card. i think we should double check but i'm pretty sure that Gitrog plays collector oof dude. All right, this yeah. is the collaborative primal because a lot of your rituals like a lot of your mana is rituals oh my god collector oof is in this it deck. does yeah dude yeah it just like it, it One, plays like two, the, three, there are eight artifacts in this deck that all crack for mana uh, yeah and that's fine you, can, you have you have things like calling ritual and calling the week that can get rid of your collector roof when you're ready um i think it's fine it's great i mean collector roof is just lights out in certain de decks in certain yeah. games it just is game over you can just say this collector roof says target player is not playing the game anymore it, it can be really good that's i think true. it's worth it yeah. I, I, don't, I haven't played enough gitrog monster to be able to actually have a real opinion on this but where do we rank it Oh, that's a great question. It's better than Gruul. Yep. And it's better than Orzov. Yep. And it's better than Selesnya. Definitely. Where is it next to Azorius? Uh, similar. I want to say similar. 
After that is Rakdos, and I don't think that it's better, I don't think than, it's Rakdos. better than Rakdos. So I really think it's like kind of between Azorius and Golgari. All right, let's go head to head. Which side do you want to take? Which side do you want to argue for? We're gonna do this like a like a high school debate. Uh, sure, okay. A blue, and blue, gonna, white is easier. Okay, you're gonna argue for that. All right, then I'll I'll argue for for Golgari, and we're gonna see what comes out here. Great. Okay. Do you want to present your opening remarks? Yeah. So I think that Golgari is better because it does have uh, some incredibly fast ways to win with the Gitrog monster. It is a very complicated stack that you have to go through but the speed of that deck and the amount of card advantage that you can get i have been able to threaten uh ad nauseums that you know get countered but uh, still present other wins after that in the same turn too so it's not necessarily impossible to present multiple wins uh one right after the other but having a big six six in the command zone is also incredibly helpful when you are in stacked out situations you can still get a lot of your card advantage uh, off of that and you can still be beat down ad nauseum decks that need to be beat down so i think that golgari is better for that reason i would say that azorius is better because you get access to better interaction a simple spell pierce can stop anything that golgari is doing most of the time if you have a ton of action to creature removal you can have swords to plowshare path to exile you can even go dip into a uh, rapid hybridization and stuff like that you have all the interaction in the world i think if you are a heads up player and are preparing for everything you will be able to temple your way through a victory my argument wasn't as long as yours, though. So does you? That mean you win? I don't think that's necessarily what that means. <laughs> I mean, because I also have a lot more arguments for Azorius too. Like, especially if we're talking about like you want like, to argue against well, yourself. Hold real on. Quick? Is this a Shorakai versus versus Gitrog monster if, thing, if or is this a Golgari versus Azorius thing? I think it's a Golgari versus Azorius. That's kind of what I think too. And we're kind of using like their best decks to compare it to each other. Yeah. Which I would say, I don't know. I kind of like Polymorph less Shorakai I mean, better than Gogo than Gitrog. But Blue White gives you control and tempo. Black Green gives you speed and consistency i mean they both kind of offer a little bit of both of those things but which is better in cdh to be honest with you i've always said it's better to be aggressive than um defensive i probably yeah. should have said better to be offensive than defensive in cdh specifically it's just easier to guarantee your own win rather than make sure the others don't win shorakai is making sure the others don't win for a second whereas gitrock says i'm just gonna solitaire solitaire and try to go myself even though it is playing things like collector oof it's a fast deck it's, it's it built is. to be a very yeah. speedy deck i feel like grist is pretty fast too that's a grist 12 in tombs quick. deck and i feel like decks that play 12 copies of one singular card are really trying to go in on that one thing especially because that's 12 times more than the number of cards that you can play in a deck of the same name <laughs> sure um yeah i i would say golgari offers speed whereas blue white offers consistency and speed is maybe better than consistency well black also gives golgari consistency at the same time too with all of the tutors i would say i guess what i mean is late game strength versus early game strength good point golgari gives you better early game ozorius gives you better late game when are your games ending if they're ending on turn three golgari is for you if they're ending on turn eight azorius is for you which is better though which is better i would say blue is better than black i would say blue is better than black i would say white is better than green yeah and <laughs> green is the worst out of all those colors but black is better than white but i don't think that matters okay so azorius will stay at four yep. and that means that <laughs> golgari will be at five then perfect very scientific of what we're doing i think this is too i think <laughs> really just I gut think, reaction yeah i think you better call a scientific journal because <laughs> we got something important to tell we them. have some really important shit to get off of our chest here can you imagine the audacity of doing something right? like that truly thinking something like this mattered hello is this the new england medical journal of excellence boy do i have something to you tell you about magic the gathering have you heard of boros before is that the next color we're talking that about? that is the color combination that we're talking about can't talk about boris without winota this one is fucking skewed it is man. very skewed i would say boris by itself honestly kind of trash kind of stinky yeah. nye is better in every account there's no reason but winota Winota is so good. When you have access to Winota in your command zone, this is the best Jeweled Lotus deck. Definitely. Well, <laughs> no, I, honestly, I'm not even sure about that. Because you also need a creature that triggers Winota right away. Otherwise, the turn one Winota doesn't do anything. The best oh, yeah. And then Gila by deck. a mile. And then Gila is just the best. Uh, Winota's great. I Winota mean, is so we, good. We've talked about trying to, what's the difference between comparing color combinations versus color combinations versus commander versus commander. Unfortunately, they're tied together. We're comparing the commanders. Winota is the Boros commander. 
Commander. There are some other ones, Queen Kayla. Blah, 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 blah. I don't, we don't have to talk about them because Winota is the one that shows Cole up in tournaments. Cole Equipment Combo. Cole, all right, great. Cole Equipment Combo. That deck exists. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Winota more. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about all the reasons why Winota is good because we know. Did we talk about? There's one more color combination after yeah, this. This is not the end of the podcast. I just yeah. got scared for a second. Like no, we missed one, right? We're still good. What Winota offers is not only card advantage, but it's also man advantage because it gets it right into play. And what's good about it is it is it helps with what Boros lacks, which is Boros does not have interaction. You don't have ways to protect your shit that are very good at all. But Winota says, you cannot counter my spell. It is in play and it's indestructible this turn. Like it just That clause in particular is what I think helpful. makes it like even better. Because Definitely. like if you could block the Magus of the Moon that just came into play that you couldn't respond to such a feel so such a feels good for your opponent such a feels bad for the winota player right though. but like just the ability to give it indestructible i think also just allows it to keep pushing through damage and like decks like this are like sometimes a lot more tiring to deal with when they don't deal damage like that and like you're still kind of forced to keep your creatures back but like this deck is highly supportive of small evasive creatures uh and just allowing you to get you know these free things in that you don't have to worry about dying really quickly yeah the incentive to attack with winota is very strong cards like goblin rabble master can create tokens that trigger winota again and again uh that is like you said like the main reason why this stack strategy i think is actually truly good is because you're getting your opponents dead quickly yeah. locking at your opponents without a direct line to finish the game is not a good strategy a hundred percent of the time that's why i lose stacks games is because like I can't you can't capitalize finish the it. game. Yeah. yeah. You can't what's the term? Pivot. Capitalize no, off of not it. Not pivot. What's the term? Capitalize off of it. No. Um break parity. Break parity. You need to be able to break parity on your stacks, which Winota helps you do. Boom. Uh, I was gonna say something else, but fuck it, I forgot it. Winota's great. really good. How Winota's good, great. How yeah, good we, is it? We we played a, a lot on the channel too. Yeah. How good is it? Let's see. Uh, better than Gruel and Orzhov. Yes, and, yes. I mean, is like better than Celestia. Is, is just like Timna. I mean, would you? Are we going back to Orzhov? No, I'm trying. I'm. I guess I'm just trying to come to terms with how much I have to think of this color combination. Uh, as basically just solely Winota. Winota. Because if I'm thinking of this as just basically solidly Winota, like Winota is the best deck out of all of them that we've talked about. <laughs> but <laughs> but but the color combination is not the best color combination. And we are ranking yeah. the color combinations. So I don't think that Boros is going to end up being stupid high in the list for that reason. I think it will be better than some of these other colors because of Winota and the commander option it has. And I think that's what's going to give it a lot of leeway. Um, but I don't think that it's going to beat Rakdos or Azorius for that reason. See, it's hard because it's how do you separate the two? How do you separate color combination from the, de the decks that you would play? Easily, They're one and the same. Easily, because we're just talking about what the colors bring to a CEDH deck then. The biggest thing that Boris brings to CEDH is Winota. I, no, no, I'm More <laughs> generally. That's, more what it, that's generally. the number one thing, though. That's like the most weighted thing that Boros brings is it brings Winota. That's the strength of bringing in Boros is you get to play Winota. I think we kind of have to judge him based off of the best commander or at least the best option options in that color combination well no i i think so too but it were if we're also this isn't a list about the best decks in the color combinations it's a list about best two the color best, commanders in cdh the best two no this is not about the commanders because we we're not ranking the commanders i haven't written down many of the commanders i just have numbers next to the but yeah, no, color combination yeah, i get it i'm arguing that they're one and the same because their video coming up this week is what's the best two color commander in cdh oh i see so you're trying to force this to be up in the top echelon <laughs> i don't know we haven't get we had to go up the chain we didn't get there you stopped we haven't we haven't gotten there yeah okay so <laughs> so where where are we putting boros we better than selesnia that's better where than we were selesnia yeah okay better than selesnia better than golgari yeah and then azorius is next and i don't know i feel like azorius i so feel like if we boros rate them strictly on colors blue is better than red and white is white right yeah so azorius would be better i'm arguing that what boros brings is also winota and all that Azorius brings is Shorokai. And Winota, yeah, I great. think, is Yeah, great. So that's better. 1v1. And Winota and that's gets 100 same. points and Shorokai gets 7. Oh, that's... Okay, so it's that skewed. <laughs> okay. Do you think Winota should stop? You think Boros should stop here? I feel like Boros should stop here because blue gives you so many more tools that it outweighs 
Winota's value just because of blue in general. That's true. I, I think that's th- definitely true. That's where I'm at with okay. it. So I in- think this is our first agree to disagree. And honest to God, dude, I'm going to give Boros a 4.5 and I'm going to give Azorius a 4.5 because it's our fucking list <laughs> and we can do whatever the fuck we want. Great. So now we're going to go to Simic. Simic. I just want to say real quickly, if we were doing the other way where we're just comparing the commanders, which is the best, like counting the commanders, oh, Winota, Winota would, would be, be at the top of the list. So oh, far. no, it I would be, definitely submit to you in that case. It, it's higher than um, yeah. Yuriko. Oh, yeah. It's definitely higher than Yuriko, too. Yeah. This would be a completely different list if we did it this way. Right. It'd be pretty close to the same. I guess. Yeah, it might be pretty close. Because Simic, the best I, ones... I, that's how I've been rating it so far. The whole time up here. Oh, really? <laughs> it is funny how it does kind of line up as yeah. well, but... I, the Winota is the biggest, starkest difference for sure. That's that, really what it is. Because it w- weighs the, diff- the space between Winota and the other commanders is so deep. The distance yeah. between the other color combination we're talking about is really close. The at least like at least like Azorius also has like Grand Arbiter, which also saw play, yeah. um, and like Lavinia. Like we had like other decks that we could like talk about and feel really good about because like they can right. do stuff. Let's move on to Simic. Simic, okay, yeah. Too too much Boros. Too much Boros. Yeah. So Kinnon. We know where. Yeah. Kenan, we we knew knows. where we were going you know. with this. Yeah. Um, there's Kadama Sakashima is another option. Yeah, I've played that deck and I don't know how it wins games. It's you have to. It's a thousand. Mana. I can't figure it out. And like Gronlock is like the other Simic deck. Frog. Um. Yeah. The frog. Right. You can like build your own ad nauseum with Traumatize. It's actually really fucking funny. It's a great Hermit Druid deck. It works really well. Yeah. I'm thinking about uh, best frog commander for the channel. That's and it. And this is definitely in the top four. What frog. It was, what's this one's name? Gronlock? Uh, Gronlock. Gitrog. Gitrog. Gitrog and Thalia. Yeah, and then... Yarlock. Or what's it called? Yargle and Multani. Yargle and Multani. That's yeah, what it is. that's what that would be. So. Best frog commander would be sick. So once we find time, everybody <laughs> has something to look forward to, and maybe yeah. they'll print more cool frogs. As far as other blue-green decks we've talked about, we've played Momir Vig before, but I think that deck is kind of I think outdated. that deck's kind of died out. There's Vanifar. Like, Vanifar can do pod chains. Yep. If you untap with Vanifar, you can normally win the game. You just have to do yeah. 45 things. So there's definitely a lot that this color combination can do but i think kinnon's the best here kinnon's the best it just gives you so much advantage it's an outlet it's it's really really good yeah this one's hard um let's ride it up the chain all right so we have uh, it's definitely better than gruel agree What's next? Orzov is next. Orzov is next. It's yep. better than Orzov. So that's that number. Selesnia is next. Selesnia is next. Better than Selesnia. Simic? Yeah, definitely better than Selesnia. After that is Golgari. Better than um yeah, it's better than Simic Golgari. is better than Golgari, yeah, Simic's better I better than think, Golgari. too. If we're not directly relating commanders, it's it's starting to get close, though, I think. Where are we at between, like, Azorius and Boros? I think it's better than Azorius, but we just said that Boros is the same as Azorius. We said that, yeah, they're the same. I think Simic is better than both of them. I think so, too. I think Kinnon is better than Minota. So on that way, it also, but yeah, yeah, I would say Ken, honestly, Ken is the best commander of all these two color commanders, to be honest. I think we're right. kind of, yeah, it's but kind of sp- between Kenan and Winota, I would say you yeah, can argue, but definitely Kenan just does so much work. Kenan just does, yeah, Kenan's, I think, Kenan, you have a little bit more control, I think. I think people are honestly less inclined, less inclined to interact with Kenan itself than Winota. Definitely, because like, they can just recast again for only yeah, four mana. Right? And Winota's you, and six the whole mana, deck they'll is, never cast nothing again. No, right, and the whole deck is built around mana, right? So like there's things that you can do to snipe out the Winota player that will hit it a lot more than like a cannon player definitely so that means that simic uh is gonna then be versus rakdos which it's better than and then is just demir next no is it is it uh, i think we can hmm where do we yeah simic versus versus is it red's better than green i think uh is it's better than simic great okay so we have a list yes i think i think that's true i think although red isn't as deep as green it gives you much higher ceiling i, I think there's a there's a deeper bench in is it yeah and I think that would also, you know, help boost that too. Great. So should we start from the bottom? Let's start from the bottom and work our way to the top. So in our number 10 slot, we have Gruel. Our number nine two-color combination is Orzov, black-white. Our number eight is Selesnia. Our number seven is Golgari. Our number five and a half is Azorius. And our number five and a half is Boros. Our number four is Rakdos. Our number three is Simic. Our number two is Is It. And our number one two color combination is Demir. Thanks so much for watching. 
If you'd like to support us directly, you can do that at our Patreon, like our $100 patrons. We have Young Mox, Kawaja A. Hamid, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at our merch store, playtoinmtg.com. Thank you so much, Dragon Shield, for supporting the show. Make sure you check out our affiliate link down below to show some love to our sponsors, Dragon Shield. If you want to check us out on social media, you can do that on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Or listening. Fuck. The $50 patrons. AJ Alvosebi. Dashes. Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Nicole Marikovic. Man Solo. Steven Schlichty. Big TP15. That's Green Guy. Isaiah Briliski. Pedro. C. Jacob Dup. Michael Blue. Jan Wolfers. Thomas Bueno. Swampy McGee. Lauren Connell. David Nelson. Joe Max. I think I'm ready to go. There's like no purple lights in yours though. We've like punched in enough where like you don't see oh, that purple well, anymore. No purple anymore. And I'm just purple. We should change that then. We should just be. How do we? What do we do? We would just change your lights to the other color. Is what I would say. Yeah, because you can see that, right? I can see that there's no purple in my, my screen. My screen's extremely purple. We should remove the purple if that's gonna happen then. Hmm. And that we that should just been? go. How is it before? No, you don't. Normally, you can see the purple. Should I zoom out? Um, so far, so far, no, we're, we're going to say fuck the purple, fuck the purple, because we can't, we can't, it'll look like we'll be in two completely different rooms.